complain about. Um, so moving back to what we were here to talk about, um, I carry about, this is 40, 40 feet and 50 feet of fish line. This is uh, spider wire, uh, extremely strong stuff. Uh, this I think is just some like generic uh, 15 or 20 pound test line. I couldn't tell you to be sure. And then I've got uh, two small basic hooks. And like I said, I'd like to get some small like freshwater lures, tuck them up in here because there is a relatively decent amount of space inside that stock. Um, you know, that you could even take a Dremel tool in these cross sections. Now, the cross sections that are in here, if you Dremel those out, again, you're going to avoid any manufacturer warranty or anything like that, but you are going to increase uh, the size of things or the capacity of things that you can fit in there. Um, but really, I don't, I don't have a... Uh, I guess, I guess if I had any complaint with the gun is why isn't this stock system right here quickly removable to be able to access this small section because um, there is space in there that you can utilize I saw this from another youtuber um, I can't I don't know the name of the youtuber and uh, sorry if uh, he feels that I'm jacking his idea because I'm definitely not I'm just sharing the knowledge because uh, it is a really good idea um, and uh, he, he had a pretty pretty good setup on his rifle as well. I just kind of tailored this one more to my needs or uh, my desires actually, because uh, I want to say this this rifle or its application is a uh, absolute need at the moment. Um, but yeah, Magpul, they, they just hit a home run with this stock. You know, there's uh, there's really no downfalls to it. Uh, that That's my one gripe with this is, uh, well, two gripes I guess is if that uh, front divider was removable, that's one, and the second one is this back plate. If it had like a slide on and slide on feature, maybe like a tab down here that locked it on, so you would have to push a tab and then slide the stock off or slide the butt pad off. I think that'd be a pretty cool feature, uh, just to add a little bit more functionality to the rifle. You know, they've got three compartments they could utilize, but they're only actually utilizing and advertising two of them. Um, I will say, once you remove this butt stock, though, when you go to put the rifle and it's stowed configuration, the barrel goes down much farther than what it normally does. You can see the barrel almost hanging out of the bottom there, and it does not lock up to the rifle the way that it's supposed to. So that butt pad does need to be on and does need to be secured and tightened down for your rifle to actually stow on itself. Um, I think that's about all I got, guys. I mean, it's, it's Memorial Day weekend. I hope you guys are having a good Memorial Day. Um, uh, I plan on getting you guys some shooting footage. Uh, I just did a review on the bag and uh, my Glock 19. And while well, I didn't do a specific review on the Glock 19, did kind of a general overview and did a review on this, but I don't have any shooting footage as it stands right now. Today's the last day, well, yesterday was the last day of turkey season, so uh, I don't go out shooting during turkey or deer season just to kind of uh, respect the people that allow me permission out there you know they they're avid hunters and they have a family that comes out and uh, hunts on their land so I I just refrain from using their land uh, during hunting season so as to not scare off the animals or uh, scare somebody that may be out there hunting so um, I plan on getting you guys some shooting footage here real soon on uh, both the Glock 19 and this and uh, coming up next on the channel, I plan on doing a review of the company 511 and some of the 511 gear that I've acquired over the years. Um, and somewhere down the line, after I acquire a new optic or uh, actually sight in my optic for it, rather, uh, for the X95, I talked about that in the last review um, and I said I was going to do a review between the 1022 and the X, or what did you guys want to see next, the 1022 or the X95? That was kind of uh, jump, jump in categories pretty hard, uh, you know, it, baby steps. I'm going to start small and work my way up. Um, another review on a rifle that I've had for a couple years that I plan on doing that actually accepts these uh, Ruger 1022 magazines is my uh, Ruger American Rimfire. Uh, you know, fuck it. Since we're, since we're here, we're talking about Ruger as a company, and we're talking about the 1022, and this takes 1022 magazines, or rotary style magazines, rather. I'll go ahead and give a general overview of this thing. I have a Hawk 
three to nine by 40. It has a uh, 22 uh, long rifle bullet drop compensator in it from anywhere from 50, yeah, 50 out to 200 yards. Use, and it, it is uh, calibrated or whatever you would, it, I believe calibrated or uh, it's, it's set for standard velocity ammunition. Uh, it is marked HV. Um, and I, I was always under the assumption that that stood for high velocity. And when I was running high velocity ammo out of this, uh, the scope's really consistent and everything, but it is, uh, the bullet drop compensator does not work with high velocity ammo. You have to use standard velocity ammo and it, it works really well with standard velocity ammo. Uh, we were reaching out to 150 yards on three inch steel plates uh, with boring accuracy and out at 200 yards, uh, 150 yards, you, you can have the wind play on you pretty hard, um, but when you talk about 200 yards, that, that wind gets even a little bit more tricky. Uh, but yeah, this, this rifle is a great rifle. This, this whole, again, this cheek riser is removable. That Well, this whole cheek riser in stock is removable, and you can put it on for one that has a flat, uh, flat cheek piece. So if, if you wanted to run like a lower red dot or something like that, I like this. It gives me the proper cheek height for basically even if I was running a red dot or uh, any higher mount, it works. Uh, it works well for me. Um, the trigger on this thing is adjustable, and I and don't quote me on uh, on how low this trigger goes, but man, this thing is a hair trigger. Uh, it takes a little bit of pull, and it doesn't have much creep, but. Uh, Great little setup here. I mean, uh, this this is probably one of my favorite guns to shoot to uh, practice basic basic fundamentals of accuracy. Uh, the only thing that this rifle is not going to train you on is uh, recoil management and uh, follow up shots because uh, it's a bolt action. I mean, you can you can practice follow up shots with a bolt action, but you're going to have to break fire control uh, your fire control grip to run the action unless you're uh, gifted that way. I'm not. Um, but going back to the scope, uh, it is a three to nine. Um, you do have uh, an eye relief adjustment back here. It is illuminated reticle. Um, I believe it uses a 2032 battery uh, and it is red and green illuminated. I can't say that I've ever really used it uh, except for one time. Uh, me and my buddy went out sh uh, shooting at night and uh, one person was shining a flashlight down range and uh, lighting up the target and the other person was shooting and uh, that was the only time we used the illuminated reticle and uh, I mean it works fine it's just illuminated reticles aren't really my thing I bought it more because it actually had a bullet drop compensator uh, built into it and I'm, I'm for $110 what I got the scope for which is not the MSRP anyways I got it on sale um, for $110 I was more than happy with the performance from this scope uh, if I bought another 22 bolt action and I was planning I mean I'm not going to shoot a competition or uh, anything uh, small board like this in a competition, so I'll just I'll kind of keep it cheap and work with it. But uh, this rifle altogether, um, the whole setup as it stands right now, I, I didn't break the bank. I didn't break over $500. You know, $110 scope, $325 rifle. I did buy a, a pretty crappy bipod. It's a Vanguard. Um, I mean, it works as a bipod should, but it doesn't work as good as some of the other uh, bipods out there. But again, we're talking about a 22. There's no reason that I would need to put a Harris bipod or an Atlas bipod, you know, a bipod on here that's almost as expensive as the gun. Um, you know, to me, this is, uh, along with the 1022, these are both like woods walk guns, you know, stuff that you take out to do planking or, or take groundhogs, squirrels, stuff like that. So um, another cool feature about this particular model that I bought, it does not have iron sights, but it is pre-threaded, uh, half by 28 threads, and it does come with its own uh, thread protector. Um, so uh, that's in the works right now, is uh, waiting on approval for a suppressor, um, getting a uh, Griffin Armament Optimus. It's a multi-caliber suppressor. It'll be able to fit on my 22, uh, this 22. If um, I were to get a threaded barrel for my 1022, I would also be able to put it on that, assuming it was half by 28 threads. And if not, there's certain adapters that you can buy for the Optimus that is going to allow it to fit on different thread pitches or tri-lug adapters, stuff like that. So uh, again, that's another future video. 
uh, slings. Just uh, I think I picked this up at like Dunham Sporting Goods. Um, it's a pretty comfortable sling. It's uh, you know just rubber, just something to carry the gun. Um, but I kind of deviated from what the whole video was supposed to be. Just supposed to be talking about the 1022. I saw the magazines laying here and forgot that I uh, had left that prop there. But uh, yeah, Ruger, keep that shit up, Magpul. Come out for a stock with that, or come out, come out with a stock for this right here. That's that's what I want to see next. Is uh, I'm 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 impressed by everything Magpul's doing from their magazines, their even their wallets. I have a DACA wallet uh, coming to me. I like uh, minimalist wallets, and uh, that one's I, I've been carrying mine in a little silicone band, and my cards are getting uh, rubbed up against my pocket tool that I carry in there, and I want something that's going to have a little bit more of a sleeve. Um, but yeah, Magpul all the way, uh, Ruger's hitting home runs. You know, if any company listens to their consumer base uh, more than any other gun company here in the United States, it's got to be Ruger. Ruger is uh, coming out with some extremely well-priced uh, items, some extremely well-made items. Um, their uh, Ruger Precision uh, series is, is getting a lot of hype right now, especially since they came out with the 6.5 Creedmoor. Um, which is another gun that I'd like to own in the future, just uh, trying to, again, taking baby steps. But, uh, you know, honestly, if uh, Magpul came out with a different stock for this, it would have to have, like, a pist uh, more of a pistol grip for me to want it. Um, I do like traditional rifle stocks, but when shooting in prone, um, I have noticed that I tend to prefer pistol grips. Uh, that could be a training issue, but it's just a matter of preference to me. Uh, you know, I'm seeing that they're coming out with uh, pre precision rifle stocks for the Remington 700 series and other similar actions. If uh, they just mimic those to come out or basically uh, played with the design a little bit so that it would be able to accept um, a Ruger American action or a Ruger rim American rimfire action, uh, that'd be pretty cool. I'm not saying that I would want to, their precision stock that came out, that'd be a little too much to put on something like this. Um, however, it would be pretty badass. All right, guys, I think that's all I got for you. Uh, any questions, leave them down in the comments below. Uh, you know, and I, I'm looking, I'm always looking for ideas of what to cover. And I want, I want you guys to give me ideas of what you want to see. So if you see something on, um, on a gun, and uh, you want to know what its performance is like. Again, I'm going to come with uh, shooting videos, reliability vi videos. Um, just currently, I'm, I'm trying to get a feel for the whole YouTube thing. And uh, I don't know. It's just more of a side project for me. So uh, sorry if I'm not, uh, not as on it as I should be. I want to keep you guys entertained. But I also have responsibilities and uh, desires. So thanks for understanding. All right, guys. Till next time, I'll catch you later.